It's snack time. I'm your host, Marno, and joining us today is a very special guest, Bobby Ann from Snack Impact, a bi weekly podcast for snack enthusiasts and caring humans. Introducing snacks, making a positive impact on the world. Yes, I read that straight off of her Instagram. You're going to have to follow it. You're going to want to follow it after you hear this episode because Bobby Ann and Snap, Snap, oh my gosh, wow, can't talk. Snack Impact are fantastic. And we're definitely going to learn more about Snap. Oh my God. Can I not say the word snack today? Literally hosts a snack related podcast and can't say the word snack. Huh? Who is she? Um, We're going to learn more about snack impact later. But first, we need to discuss the snack that Bobby Ann is sharing with us today, which is s'mores. Hi, Bobby Ann. How are you? I'm good. I'm super excited to be talking about s'mores today. It is one of my favorite topics. Thank you so much for having me. Oh my gosh, it is an honor. Thank you so much for joining me today at Snack Time. I love your podcast and the whole message behind it. I wholeheartedly believe that snacks and food in general can bring so much joy and connection between people. And it's just so cool. And I love that we both have a podcast about snacks. Like, yes, (laughs) that's connected us on a whole other level. (laughs) There's more of us out here than you guys think. We've got a whole... A whole thing. Apparently, it's all happening on the West Coast, too. Yeah, (laughs) it's all in Southern California. Like, we just love snacks out here, I guess. And, I mean, most of the listeners, at least the ones that I know personally, also live down here. So, (laughs) it is part of the culture. Um, And snacks, I think, are also, I mean, part of probably most people's cultures. But I think especially beach culture in Southern California That is my connection with s'mores. It's the beach and all that. So I'm really excited for this episode. And by the time this episode is out, Snackers, you you know this because you're living it, but Bobby Ann and I are recording a little bit uh, before, but it's going to be summer. Summer will be upon us. My Uh, favorite But right now we're in late May and it's like feels like it's going to rain outside. It's raining in San Diego, right? My sister lives down there. So she said this morning it was, I was like, oh, it's just yeah. cloudy here. But uh, it's been a little sprinkly today, which is like kind of rare. I And I've only been living in California for the last year and a half. So rain happening. I'm like, is it? <laughs> Is everything okay? Because it's only rained here like four times the entire time I've lived here. <laughs> oh my God. I don't even think about it. talking about rain nothing important (laughs) (laughs) nothing relevant we're literally talking about the weather okay but the weather is relevant oh snackers we're back i'm just gonna edit from there because zoom was weird on us um maybe it's the weather maybe (laughs) which is what we I mean, like i said it's only rained like four times since i've lived here so maybe the internet's like what is rain yeah (laughs) truly but like it's raining and it feels not like summer at all, but summer is so close. Like June is in a few, like basically two weeks and that is s'mores time. So this episode, oh, it's going to get me in the mood even more for summer. Okay. But first, before we get about, we talk about s'mores because, you know, we're going to like, oh, so many stories and ingredients and just deliciousness. Uh, but, you know, here it's snack time. We have to ask a specific question, and I must ask it of all of my guests here at Snack Time, because at Snack Time, we want to learn about each other. We want to know what each other likes. If we're going to, like, bring a snack for a friend, we want to know, are we going salty or sweet? So, Bobby Ann, are you a salty or sweet snacker? I've been pondering this. Ever since we had a conversation a couple weeks ago about doing this episode, and I've literally just continuously thought about it because I bounce back and forth. And I know your audience is probably going to hate me for this because it's kind of a cop out. No, no. Snackers, snackers, (laughs) snackers, don't be judging. We do not judge here. You're listening to this. You are in a safe space. Bobby Ann, do not. Thank you. (laughs) Any negativity. (laughs) 
<laughs> well, it is kind of a cop out answer. And since we're talking about like seasons, I feel like my leniency towards salty or sweet changes with the season. So like summer, Ooh. summer, spring, lots of like popsicles and ice cream and like chocolate s'mores and all of that. I think that's very like summer, spring, but then you get into fall and winter and you just want cozy. Like that's when I start getting into like savory, salty snacks, all of that. Mm. Cause I can't miss out on pumpkin, but I'm more of like a savory pumpkin <laughs> person. So that's where I start getting into all of that. But yeah, I'm kind of like a half your sweet, half your sweet, or salty and savory. <laughs> Interesting. I've never thought about it that way, but yeah, when it's hot, you're more likely going to want something refreshing and that's usually something sweet. I don't know if there's anything salty that I'd find refreshing other than like the salt on the rim of a margarita. <laughs> yes. Like, <laughs> that's like, but it's like, that's the unrefreshing part of the margarita. It's a good balance, though. You still got that. It's right in the middle. Margaritas during the summertime. Can't beat it. Yeah. Can't. <laughs> can't beat it. Especially if later on in the night, you're going to go to a bonfire and you're going to have da, da, da. some <laughs> s'mores. <laughs> so both of us made s'mores today. I mean, I just stuck mine in the toaster oven. It still smells and looks fantastic what did you do for your s'more so I don't have a toaster oven but I did put mine just in the regular oven which was probably a little yeah, excessive I, mean, I just slid in this tiny little <laughs> cracker into the whole oh oven <laughs> wait I love the idea of that I f did you take a picture per I, chance I did it but like this is I this yeah. is the size I'll take a picture of this that looks so and we'll good we'll post though. it later I'll take a picture of it that would be so right fun. now of how tiny this yes. is in oh just like gosh. a regular size of it. <laughs> you're hearing the behind the scenes of this s'mores photo shoot right now <laughs> but also I just love the image of like a tiny single serving s'more in a full size <laughs> oven because in my little toaster oven it like it looked you know it took up a, a a good amount of space like a small piece of bread but yeah you know, it, it wasn't even so a funny. whole cracker either because you know like graham crackers come in those like long rectangles it's a half mm -hmm. of a rectangle i did a half too i didn't even i didn't put my top on yet um which might have been an issue because at this point it's a little bit cooled down <laughs> but I want to hear, like, what ingredients did you use? What is your, like, ideal s'more? If it has to do with the ingredients, the environment, when you're having it, who's with you? Like, what is the ideal, perfect, top-tier s'more experience for well, you? Well, I can positively say that it's not a single graham cracker in an oven. <laughs> <laughs> I would, I would much more prefer to definitely be roasting marshmallows over an actual campfire. Uh, Cause I even, Same. it wasn't, I just wasn't satisfied with how it came out completely. So I even took like a little lighter and I scorched the sides of it, it because I was like, there's nothing else. Like there's no other way to do this inside of an apartment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but definitely best, absolute best would be over campfire roasted. I know that marshmallows are a little controversial about temperature wise you know i feel like it's in that same area of like steak where people are like if you eat a, you know a well done steak you're wrong i feel like marshmallows are in that same category uh-huh we definitely need to get into that yes. later um so what i but how is yours um, how like how do i do my marshmallow like how well done is it yeah. it is medium rare <laughs> Okay. Medium rare is like okay. my preferred. I love it to be golden all the way around. If it catches fire, mm. I I panic and I've ruined it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I feel like that golden ratio all the way around, like not just one side or the other. It has to be all the way around uh, because mm -hmm. it's still gooey on the inside, but it doesn't have any char to it. Mm -hmm. Well, spoiler alert for mine, but if that if we are ever in a sharing fire situation where we're making s'mores and yours catches it on fire you can just pass it right on to me <laughs> so you are a charred girl i mean i it. i love first of all i'm like when i'm at a campfire or a bonfire the pyromaniac in me 
jumps out. <laughs> like, I don't know who I am when I'm around a bonfire, but like, also that. I don't know why I like that burnt taste. So I usually like wait for it to literally be engulfed in flames and then I like blow it out and then I like peel essentially, not peel, but like just simply lift up the shell that has now formed and then I eat the crunchy shell. I think it's the crunch mostly. Crunch it. And then I stick the rest of it back in and I just repeat that process until it's like down to the tiniest bit at what point do you have enough marshmallow to keep doing that like, it literally like... becomes like a pearl oh my gosh i've <laughs> never seen anybody put it back in the fire before <laughs> i mean i okay for someone who's not like a big sweet snacker like i'm mostly salty like that's what i crave just more often than not but when it comes to sweets that are just like pure sugar I don't know, like, that speaks to me. Like, marshmallows, well, I don't really like uncooked marshmallows that much. Me neither. I really just like melty, gooey marshmallows. And then, like, oh, my God, what is it called? (laughs) Cotton candy. Why do I love cotton candy? Like, you know, just those, like, literally it's sugar. That's the only ingredient. And I love it. So marshmallows when it's burnt and it's like caramelized I guess is what you would say except I take it like past caramelization (laughs) yeah oh my Mm. gosh do you eat your hot dogs the same way are you one of those people no no I'll I mean if it's barbecued and it gets a little burnt I'm not upset about it but like I'm not trying to burn my my wieners you know (laughs) (laughs) that's fair because I also think that's too far But, you know, to each their own, it's you're the one eating it, so do what you want to do. If you want to pop that bad boy back in there two or three times, go for (laughs) it. (laughs) The mallow does not leave the flame for a long time when I'm at the bonfire, yes. Okay, so what what chocolate did you use? And, like, is that your ideal chocolate situation? Yes. So Mm. I will say what I used to do as a kid is I used to love to get Reese's Cups. And I would do okay, yes. Reese's Cups as my chocolate. But I have this really good chocolate. It's Askinosi chocolate. And it's a dark chocolate peanut butter. So as I've grown up and learned more about chocolate, gotten, you know, expanded my palate. Mm-hmm. Uh, dark chocolate is my favorite chocolate. Um, but dark chocolate doesn't melt as easy. Uh, but this one in particular is, I think, six. 60% dark chocolate and the rest is peanut butter but wow. it's not it's not peanut butter filled it's like mixed into the bar itself so it just it melted so perfectly I can only imagine because peanut butter at room temperature is like basically a liquid so heating it oh wow that yeah. sounds so good yes and then I just chose like a classic vanilla marshmallow to go with that um, I mm-hmm. use marshmallows so if you guys have ever seen marshmallows there's these like perfectly I'm gonna try not to make too much noise with the bag but they're these <laughs> like perfectly cubed marshmallows they're giant and they are so fresh they're so smushy and just perfect oh. you know how like a lot of the classic marshmallows will kind of dry out and get kind of crusty around the edges mm-hmm. even after you've just like freshly opened the bag for some reason yeah. like half the marshmallows are crusty these don't do that they're so perfect I don't know I don't know what they do to them they're the most amazing marshmallows and on <sighs> top of that they're non-gmo they use like organic sugar uh, they're gluten-free what there are all these like bonus goodies on top of just being like a stellar marshmallow (laughs) wow okay that needs to be the next mallow that i buy yeah you and then what cracker are you are you layering on i just use like a classic uh honey made graham cracker Mm -hmm. just like you know the og snack time like you know (laughs) kindergarten (laughs) snack time graham cracker Oh, yeah, that's what I went with, too, because I was like, I want to just, like, use what I would have used in high school, which is literally, I mean, probably not even actually that brand, probably, like, the store brand version. Right. But, yeah, I have the same Honey Made, just, like, classic. Um, I have just, like, what is the brand? I think it's, like, Jet Puff or whatever that, like, just classic Mallow is, but for my chocolate, because... 
I do love chocolate, but again, I'm not the biggest sweet tooth. <laughs> I was going to say sweet sour. But that's <laughs> not the word. The biggest, I'm not the biggest sweet tooth. So when it comes to milk chocolate, sometimes it's like too sweet. So I didn't want to go with the classic like Hershey's bar of milk chocolate. But my favorite chocolate and kind of the only snack chocolate I would say that I've like frequently bought throughout my life is just a bag of semi-sweet chocolate chips. So I just have like the Kirkland brand, I think, like just from Costco, like semi-sweet chocolate chips because they're not too bitter with the dark chocolate, although I do like dark chocolate, but to have a little bit more of the sweet, semi-sweet is just so good. It's like a mixture. And because they're little chocolate chips, I can put less chocolate than it would be if it was just like a solid piece of chocolate on my s'more, which I think is ideal for my situation. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's mine. And it looks so cute. The mallows have deflated at this point, but oh. <laughs> I do have it open face as well, because usually that's how I'll eat it. So then I'd like, because I tend to eat like pretty messily. I feel like my mouth is kind of small. So it comes to a s'more with like two layers of crackers. It's just crumbles everywhere, especially if you're at the beach and you're like just getting sticky marshmallow like on your bare chest. Like it's not an ideal situation, you know? So open faced, I can kind of like control it a bit more. So that's how I have mine today as well. That is, I feel like that is definitely probably the only downside of s'mores is the eating situation. <laughs> it is so messy, but also like with it open face like that, does the marshmallow not just get stuck? It does. But again, it's just sugar that like melts pretty easily. It's not like, True. like a really sticky, like gummy candy or something, you know? So That's yeah, fair. it does. It does get a little more sticky on the roof of your mouth and your lips, but you know, it's going to be like that anyway so I'd rather just make it easier yeah I'm just like it, especially at the beach and stuff like that I'm like you know what it's gonna be messy I'm gonna just let it I'm True. not even gonna yeah. try to <laughs> try to tone it down at all whatever this is just <laughs> happening it's it maybe I need to do it that way I just need to lean into the mess accept it <laughs> <laughs> okay well can we lean into lean our teeth into these s'mores? yes that's a good segue because i want to take a bite of this definitely and my my chocolate's like everywhere because it melted a little too much but it's it's looking good dang oh my the like perfect perimeter wow i'm not yeah. sure it's able to accomplish oh, no. that like over a campfire but <laughs> <laughs> are you ready? True. yes we need to hear that crunch and then i'll Cheers. take a well we'll take a bite at the same time okay okay yes. <laughs> <gasps> it's still melty oh my god i thought mine would be hard by now me too wow wow that's so crunchy <laughs> a little ASMR there for you. You're welcome. <laughs> Snackers love it. <laughs> and if you don't, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't. I hate it so much. <laughs> I have a friend that she listens to that stuff all the time. Like when she's working, instead of playing music, she just has that kind of stuff in the background. I'm like, are you a really? psycho? Really? ASMR? Yes. I feel like I wouldn't be able to focus. No way. I'm like, are you psycho? What's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny I, do you know like what is it like food ones or is it like the ones where it's like tingling on your head kind of thing yeah it's like nails tapping on glass and like rain <laughs> and like I don't know just like random items opening cans yeah. and I'm like how do you work like this <laughs> that's so funny does she Me. use I'm sorry this is like completely taking over my brain right now that is fine Does because she use I, like I was mind blown when she, when I called her like over Zoom one day, we just had like a little coffee work thing, you know, like we were uh -huh. on a break and we were just calling. I was like, what do you have playing in the background? She's like, oh, that's just what I listen to when I'm working. I'm like, well, uh, wait, what? so she has it playing out of her speakers, not even her headphones? Yeah, well, I guess just because we were talking, I don't know what she like 
listens to all day, but I know she just had it like she's got like a double screen and she yeah. had it just like playing on the second <laughs> screen, like on YouTube. I love that she left it playing as she was talking to you too. Like, what? I don't know. Maybe it's just like white noise for her. Like she listens to it so much. She doesn't fully concentrate on it. Maybe (laughs) I, there's no way. Absolutely. That would be so distracting because like, I understand, like sometimes I listen to like segments of ASMR videos. I'm like, okay, like, yes, it sounds very interesting. And like it, you know, It's not unpleasant, but it's not something that I could have in the background, I don't think. It's like, what is that? Okay, why is it making that sound like... Or when they whisper. Uh. (laughs) I hate it so much. Especially if it's headphones, because it really feels like they're right there behind you, you know? Mm -hmm. Oof. It... It's such a mystery to me. That whole, how did that even become such a genre on YouTube? Like, there's a whole lot of people out there just doing I mean, this for a living. The people doing it for a living, wow, they really, they lucked out that so many people are into it. Because what a, what a specific niche thing. It's so funny. Wild. Wow. Wild. Well, I, that'll be all the ASMR for this episode, Snackers. So sorry if you came here for more ASMR, but um, we will not be providing any more from this point forward. However, I am going to give my guest, Bobby Ann, some time to delve into her s'more, enjoy the snack time experience, while I share a little s'mores history um, I found this article from foodandwine.com. I feel like they're pretty, pretty good source for food related information. And it's called The History of S'mores, Ancient Greeks, Girl Scouts, and One Very Puritanical Mister, Minister, <laughs> Mister. This sounds like a new um, Netflix series. <laughs> yeah. And then the log line is the first recipe for the campfire treat is 90 years old. But the seeds of the s'more go back much further. Like, such intrigue for this snack. I'm ready. Uh, This is written by Matt Blitz, published on August 10th, 2017 for foodandwine.com. Let's get into it. Um, The picture they have, I've got to say, not the best looking s'more I've ever seen. Um, the mallow, I feel like both of us would be like disappointed with the mallow because it Mm. definitely has black, like charred spots on it. So you wouldn't like it. And then for me, it's like only specific parts of the marshmallow have like charred spots. And then the other parts just like look stark white. So it's like, they they literally just took like one side in, I think, which both of us agree, not the way to do it. Totally improper. Totally improper. (laughs) Impossible s'more to appreciate. (laughs) Sorry, foodandwine.com. D (laughs) minus. Okay, let's learn some stuff and eat some s'mores. Like savoring a slice of watermelon, licking popsicles and eating dozens of hot dogs, making s'mores is a summer food. And while the first official recipe appeared 90 years ago... The undocumented tradition of the s'more may have started earlier. The very first marshmallows came from a plant called Althea officinalis. Early civilizations, including the ancient Greeks and Romans, used the root and leaves of the plant for medicinal purposes, often to help with inflammation and as a laxative. In fact, the word, just so beware, don't do have too many, don't have too many marshmallows. In fact, the word althea comes from the Greek altheo, meaning to cure. Oh my God, we're eating medicine. But it was the French who first marketed marshmallow as a treat rather than a medicine, combining the root juice of the plant with eggs and sugar beaten into a foam. Oh my God. So what's it called? Uh, what is it when you just like beat egg whites? Oh my like God. meringue? Meringue, yeah. So made as the same way, I guess. They formed the soft paste into a lozenge and called it pâté de guimauve. Its purpose was twofold, soothe the throat and taste good. 
But this treat was expensive and labor intensive, much like all marshmallow based medicines of the day. By the end of the 19th century, gelatin has replaced the juice from the actual plant because it was a close approximation in taste and form, but much cheaper alternative. <gasps> hmm. mm. It became not vegan. Actually, no, there's already eggs in it, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Graham crackers were originally invented to curb sex drive. Early 19th century New Jersey Presbyterian minister Sylvester Graham. What? It's named after him. Believed that humanity, as Atlas Obscura reports, was on its way to a moral collapse due to an obsession with carnal desires. Wait, so this guy was like, um, what's his name? The oat dude. Oh my God. Oh. What is the company? Literally, I have oatmeal in my cupboard. I, Quaker. Quaker. I was going to say, I could see his hat in my head. Right? <laughs> they, I wonder if these guys were friends, because they should have. That... <laughs> he also believed the food we were eating greatly contributed to our undeterred need to have sex. A simple steak dinner with wine could, according to an 1847 text he wrote... Increase the con concupiscent, don't know what that word is, excitability of the genital organs. What is happening? So he promoted a special process of baking using only finely ground unbleached wheat flour, wheat bran, and coarsely ground germ. Out of this came a bland, dry cracker that he named after himself the Graham Cracker. <laughs> I there are. <laughs> It's so hard to process all of this between the laxatives and just like <laughs> this article is like so unappetizing at this point. That's amazing. There are a few of potential precursors to the modern day iteration of s'mores we know today. Victorian era funeral cakes. What is this article? <laughs> Funeral cakes, spe specially prepared upon the death of a loved one, sometimes included chocolate and marshmallow. During the 1890s, a marshmallow roasting fad took hold of summer resort towns in the Northeast. Places like Asbury Park in New Jersey hosted them, often drawing a young crowd, especially since newspapers at the time called the roasts an excellent medium for flirtation, oh. since people could nibble off each other's sticks. Malamars, which are essentially s'mores in cookie form, first appeared on shelves in 1913. Moon Pies debuted a few years later and are also basically a s'more cousin. While all of these tasty innovations got the idea of roasted marshmallow, chocolate, and graham crackers into people's hand heads and mouths, it wasn't until 1927 when it all came together in gooey symphony. The first official recipe for a s'more came out in the 1927 Girl Scout guidebook, Tramping and Trailing with the Girl Scouts. Okay, I am so proud to have been a former Girl Scout at this moment. I made so many marshmallows when I was a Girl Scout. Or marshmallows, <laughs> s'mores, but more specifically, probably just a bunch of marshmallows. While the book was meant to give advice on how to be a good Girl Scout, always getting a parent's permission before hiking... Its lasting legacy was the Some More. Originally intending to feed 1,600 hungry scouts, the recipe, which was later credited to a troop leader named Loretta Scott Crew, calls for 16 graham crackers, 8 bars of plain chocolate, and 16 marshmallows. Next, it says to toast the marshmallows to a crispy, gooey state. Then put the marshmallow on top of a chocolate bar and in between two graham crackers and voila, you got us some more. It's unclear when the name was shortened to simply s'more, but various Girl Scout publications kept re referring to the treat as some more until at least 1971. If nothing else, it all makes for a good campfire story. The end. Wow. What oh an article. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, I can I cannot wait to pull out this little fun fact about <laughs> graham crackers being a sexual suppression. Right? <laughs> <laughs> the next time that I'm at a bonfire, just be like, yeah. hey guys, did you know? <laughs> well, and at the same time, like it went from being like that was like its main purpose for creation, and then later used by 
hormonal teens on the beaches of Jersey to like eat off each other's sticks. Like he was rolling in his grave. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my god. But like seriously, the peak of me eating s'mores and like roasted marshmallows, I think in my life and maybe for the rest of my life will have been like during high school. Like going to the beach on weekends or especially in the summer and like the way that my friends usually did it was a few of us would go like way early in the day to like stake out a bonfire pit and like some of us would like switch back like go get food or like you know go here and there but someone had to be manning the pit at all times and then once it got like you know late enough in the day we would like have people bring all the food and like yeah that sounds like such a fun time like I'm so jealous I actually grew up in Tennessee so we were nowhere near close to a beach (laughs) so So what was your like bonfire like what would you do for bonfires oh gosh so I mean where I grew up is all like woods and fields and it was pretty much wherever you wanted (laughs) see (laughs) that is magical to me because like Unless our friends had, like, a bonfire pit in the backyard, it was, like, that or the beach. But, like, having a bonfire, like, in the woods, like, that is one of my dreams. Like, Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much what everybody does all summer because where I grew up, there was literally nothing to do. Like, nothing. Everybody went to, like, go hang out in Walmart parking lot kind of situation. I love so, that. So, you know, like, on the weekends, it definitely, like, once it it was not cold at night or not too cold at night. Yeah. Bonfires, like, every weekend, definitely, that was what everybody was doing. Whoever's house we were at, I mean, there's, we were far enough out of, like, city limits that there weren't any, like, regulations about not being able to burn fires in your yard or anything like that. So, uh-huh. yeah, bonfires all the time. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Did you guys just do s'mores or would you also do like hot dogs, like other food on the bonfires? Oh, definitely. Like hot dogs are a perfect staple. Uh, I feel like you can't really do s'mores without hot dogs. You know, it's like right. it's a hand in hand thing, especially if all you were bringing out anyway is just sticks. Like you can't really do anything else. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. One time or maybe it was a few times, especially one time I remember One of my friends said that they were bringing, like, marinated Korean barbecue beef. And I was like, what? And they straight up brought, like, a, I guess, like, tray rack kind of, like, a rack, I guess, to put across the whole length of the bonfire pit and then put, like, a little grilling metal tray and then put the meat on top. It was... My mind was blown. And then do you know what we did? Because of course we still had hot dogs. We put the meat on the hot dogs. It was so good. I think about that all the time. That is next level bonfire stuff, especially for high schoolers. That's amazing. Who thought of that? That is. I don't remember because it was like one of those times. It was like a ton of people. It probably That's- wasn't one of my close friends because we're the ones that were just like, I don't know, let's just get hot dogs on the <laughs> way over from like Walmart and like literally just go to the beach, you know. But someone was thinking that day and I, I wish I knew who it was. Snackers, oh. if you were there, if someone listening was there and you remember who brought that, please tell me because I really need to like like cement it in my memory of like the whole experience we need to know we need to give them full credit for this brilliant execution of a bonfire (laughs) as a teenager like mind blown bravo yeah we definitely would never have thought of anything like that well not that we even would have known what like what that was i have (laughs) never even had korean food or anything like oh any kind of like thin and meats like ramen or anything like that never had anything like that in my life until I was like in my 20s yeah okay have you gone sorry snackers but if you go to San Diego you need to go here but have you gone to convoy no in San Diego oh okay this is a PSA for everyone listening right now but especially my guest Bobby Ann because she lives in San Diego there is an area of San Diego and it's like a street name too convoy and there's it's like one of the highest densities of asian businesses and like specifically restaurants in the world and it's 
yeah. There's so much good stuff. I've only had, like, I think two places from there, but, like, it's known, so. That's good to know, because that is that is our jam. Like, we mm-hmm. love this stuff so much. I, I love, yeah, definitely Asian food. Like, we go to the Asian market all the time, which, by the way, totally different episode, but Asian snacks at, from the oh, Asian yeah. market. Oh, yeah. We've talked about, I think, just, like, the instant boba I have an episode of and uh, shrimp chips I've talked about, Ooh. but there are so many more. Oh, do you know what? The Gudetama chips that I tried on a live one time, those were also an Asian snack, but there's so many Asian snacks, like I, crazy. I love to just go down the snack aisle. And I mean, I, I can't read any of it. None of it's in English. Right? So I have no yeah. idea what I'm getting. I'm just like judging everything from the pictures, but I just love to grab random stuff. Mm-hmm. Love it. And like the cute characters, like Asian packaging, I think specifically Japanese packaging just has like the cutest and snackers. You guys know, like one of the biggest things I love about Trader Joe's is their packaging. It's just so cute and inviting and makes me smile. And it's funny a lot of the times too. And I feel like Japanese packaging gives me that vibe as well. Absolutely. But anyways, back to freaking s'mores. <laughs> no, this is what I love about this. I'll just get off topic and talk forever. Yeah. But like, do you have a... So for me, I think my bonfire s'more, one of my biggest memories that pops in my head is that Korean barbecue thing. But also one time I like almost stumbled into the fire and then my friend like quoted Harry Potter but like specifically Goblet of Fire movie version when Dumbledore Stop. goes did you put your name in the Goblet of Fire <laughs> like literally the book says he said it calmly but I forget the actor's name Michael something I think in the movies he just really wanted to go for it yeah. and so my friend like quoted that to me because also back then like we just talked about Harry Potter non-stop and now I also think of, did you put your name or did you put your face in the goblet of fi- in yeah. the, no, what did she say? Did you put your face, I think just in the fire to me, but she said it in the same way that I was like, what? <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So those are the two things I think of when I think of s'mores, which aren't even like s'more related, but like bonfire related. That's so perfect though. Like perfect timing, perfect reference. <laughs> Bravo. Right? That's amazing. Well, so, like, do you have any memories that stick out regarding or surrounding around s'mores? Oh, definitely. So, I, so my parents are divorced, so I would spend, like, a couple weeks every summer with my dad because he lived in a different part of the state. So, like, every summer I would spend, like, two or three weeks straight, like, hanging out with my dad. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, again, lived out in the middle of nowhere. He had this massive field in the back of his house so there was like plenty of room to do stuff and we always like at least every two or three days would do a bonfire he also owned a wood shop so he had like that's perfect yeah so he always had like leftover wood you know just small scraps that you can't really do Mm -hmm. anything with so we were always building bonfires all summer long s'mores all week long it was amazing like that's just always what I think about is like that like nine to like 13 year old like me and my dad hanging out and we would just like lay out watch the stars eat some s'mores just like perfect you know summer night kind of situation amazing that's what I think about every time I think about s'mores and even now when I go to visit my dad like I'm 26 years old and we still do s'mores every time I go to visit my dad I love that that is like a s'mores commercial (laughs) like literally that could be like that trage- trajectory of like you as a kid and you're like so excited and then now it's like you're an adult and you're coming back home and like <laughs> uh I see it in my brain like someone jet jet puff Hershey's <laughs> honey made or like I'll use me it. as a consultant pay me <laughs> like <laughs> I'm giving you this idea but that is so just picturesque oh I love it I've never even like been somewhere where I could like really lay out and look at the stars I don't feel like even when I've gone camping it's like not far enough away I don't think to... oh really I feel like there's a lot of great places out here in California to go camping I haven't gone camping that many times is oh. the thing <laughs> that's, like, fair. that's fair as a girl scout I did a lot but like in girl scouts you don't go too far 
Um, and then I feel like I went camping with my family once, but I don't remember looking at the stars. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have plenty of a beach experience, which I'm super True. jealous about oh, because yeah. that was like kind of what we all aspire to do during the summer as teenagers. It's like have a beach trip, but you know, we're, <laughs> We're like 12 hours from the beach and you know like wow. what what parents are going to let their 16 year olds drive 12 hours down to the beach and just hang yeah. out for the weekend you know not so, not many that i knew <laughs> no not at all so uh yeah that was you definitely had like dream teen experience for me <laughs> <laughs> so you have like the idyllic like childhood slash just like i don't know tradition I guess because it's now like what you do even as an adult and then I had the like typical teen like let's go down to the beach and roast some weenies and s'mores like just like blasting I think at the time like did we even have like I don't think we even had like bluetooth speakers it was probably like plug into your iPod (laughs) like not even iPhone like it runs out of battery at one point and then it's just silent. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I think about that sometimes. I'm like, what did everybody do before all of this very convenient technology? Not that I didn't live in a time that like we definitely, I mean, I'm I'm not sure how old you are, but like we definitely seemed like we're around the same Yeah, I'm 28. Oh, okay. So yeah, like we would have been at school in the same time and all of that. Like Mm -hmm. I didn't know that I lived at one point without any of this technology. Like definitely halfway through middle school, iPods did not exist. Like they weren't a thing Mm -hmm. yet, but I don't remember. Well, the thing that scares me the most is like, I cannot go places that I've not, that I haven't been before without my phone. Like I remember printing out map quest directions and even probably to go to the beach, my friends and I like, cause it is like a bit of a drive. It's not like down the street, but we would have to like get on multiple freeways and, you know, find parking and all that. So we would print out directions, but like I... before that, what would you even do? Like look at a map? Like how do you remember? Like, how are you like, I need my phone that has the map. And the words telling me what to do, like, at eye level, so I can, like, find, like, that says, like, counts down the feet until you turn. Yes. Like, <laughs> yes. I, I could not read a map to save my life. Like, definitely not while, while I'm driving. Like, what do you do? Pull over to the side of the road and you're like, okay, let me memorize five steps. Like, turn here on this and blah, blah, blah. Like, no. I'm literally one of those people that, you know, I'll be like, hey, how do you get to so-and-so's house? They'll be like, take a left over here and then drive a few miles. I'm like, stop. I did not, <laughs> I did not hear anything you just said. Give me the directions. <laughs> I'll put it in my phone. Or give me the, the address and I'll put it in my phone. Like, Yeah, same. like three steps in. I, I totally blacked out. I have no idea what you just said. <laughs> no clue. Same, same. I mean, yeah. Thank God for technology. Yes. And even better for technology, this is how I found all of my favorite snacks, like social media. Yes. How did people find anything before social media? I don't know. Like my favorite chocolate that I made my s'mores with today, the marshmallows that I made, like they're all my favorites and I would have never found them. Wow. I mean, this podcast wouldn't be happening. No. How would we be connecting on this level about <laughs> s'mores without technology? We love it. Snack I- time. Official stance on technology, two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. <laughs> Except when the Zoom goes in and out. Right. <laughs> and scares us while we're recording a podcast. <laughs> and now we're like oh my completely gosh. reliant. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Oh, well, Bobby Ann, any last thoughts about s'mores? Um, I, I think that we have covered everything, honestly. Um, I mean... There are limitless combinations that you could go with. We didn't even touch on all of the combinations that you could possibly go with. I mean, no, I thought we were going to talk about it, but we're already at like 47 minutes. I'm like, started talking about the weather, and (laughs) (laughs) that's what s'mores does. I know s'mores connects every part of our lives because guess what? If you want to make a s'more on a bonfire, you have to talk about the weather, it can't be raining. So true. So true. Boom. Full circle. We did it. (laughs) We did it. it. Okay. But before we go, please tell us 
tell the snackers about Snack Impact. Like, I think what you're doing at your podcast is incredible. Uh, You're going to learn a lot. You're going to get snack recommendations, like specific brands and like why you should support them. And like, it's just, anyway, I'll stop. You go. Tell the snackers what you're all about over at Snack Impact. Well, thank you so much. Now that I'm nice and flush over here, you're (laughs) flattering me so much. Uh, So, I mean, you pretty much nailed it at the beginning. It's all about just better snacks. So I am all about supporting. I mean, if somebody told me, went to the doctor tomorrow and they were like, you have to give up snacks or you're not going to live. I would be like, peace out world. It's been real. (laughs) Let me go out (laughs) with the biggest snack I've ever eaten. Yes. Uh, But so I'm never going to give up snacks, but I am all about choosing better snacks if there is a better option. So what I kind of found throughout all of my snack calls that I was doing for myself was that the better snacks that I was choosing, you know, the ones that were more organic or the ones that were less sugar or sustainably sourced or whatever the the deal was, was that all of these snacks that were just better snacks in general also had a social initiative partnered with them. And so I'm like, that is a cherry on top. Like they're already, they already taste better. They already have better ingredients. They're already doing awesome things anyway. Uh, Why not just add another bonus to it, which is you're supporting some other really great cause just by continuing your snack addiction, (laughs) you know? Um, So Mm -hmm. it's, it's a win-win on both sides. And then kind of when I started getting into it, I realized like nobody's talking about this. I was, I was looking for myself. I was like getting obsessed with this whole thing of like snacks with the social initiative. I was looking for podcast episodes. I was looking for YouTube channels. I was looking for anybody who was talking about it. Nobody was talking about this. I mean, you might have like random episodes where maybe like Ask an OC Chocolate was on a unrelated podcast about Mm -hmm. business or something like that, but it wasn't a snack podcast. So that's, that's what we do. I, I, browse around and I find snacks that are doing cool things. And I get to talk to a lot of really cool people, mostly founders, but sometimes just other really cool people on the team that have been involved for a long time, a lot of nonprofits. Um, so not all of them are just like businesses that you can buy snacks off the store. Some of them are just straight up nonprofits that just offer snacks. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's what we're doing over there. We're talking snacks and we're talking being a good human and everything in between. So, uh, just like today, like ask an OC chocolate is one of my favorite episodes that I've ever done. That's what I used on my s'more and I will never, ever eat any other chocolate probably like in my regular snack cabinet. I just probably won't ever go back because that was like the coolest episode. I learned so much about chocolate just from hearing him talk about all of the things that happen. And uh, yeah, so I hope you guys will do the same when you come over and listen that you'll get all of this information and you'll be like a level 10 snacker by the time you leave. Oh my gosh. Yes. Snackers go over to snack impact right now. Subscribe, follow on Instagram. What is the Instagram that the snackers can find you at as well? So you can find me at snack impact pod on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, all the places. Love it. Snackers, go follow, subscribe everywhere. You're going to learn. You're going to have fun. Also, like, so cool that you talk to, like, founders and, like, official people, you know. Over at Snack Time, we're just, like, chilling and (laughs) farting around, like, just eating snacks and Googling stuff. But, like, to hear straight from the people making the snacks, the people in charge of, like, giving it giving you that joy of snacking and then like the experience because like snacks, food, it's not just eating for like nutrition, although really great when that is a benefit. It's not just eating like because you're hungry and you're just filling time. Like there can be so many layers to a good snack. And I love that you're pointing out like the social impact that snacks can have because- I'm just obsessed. I love it. Thank you. Um, so thank you again, Bobby Ann, for joining us today at Snack Time. It has been such a pleasure. You are welcome back anytime. And Snackers, thank you so much for listening. Don't forget to follow and subscribe on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, wherever else you listen to podcasts. 
and follow Snack Time on Instagram at Snack Time Pod. And we'll see you next time at Snack Time. Bye.